You can run, but you can't hide. Because whether you like it or not, it's the holidays, part two. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for those of us over 50 gay men. Not only are we bringing our voices back to the conversation, we are the conversation, and we want you to be a part of it with us. Hello, I'm Tom Burke. And I am Michael Foley. And Michael and I, this season, have been talking about all the different relationships that we over 50 gay men have in our lives. And one thing that's really important that we talked about was, especially with things that are issues or problems or, you know, difficult things in life acknowledging it, talking about it, bringing it out to the open, it kind of releases it and makes us move forward. And last week, we were talking about the holidays, the impending holidays, and how, you know, acknowledging all our feelings towards that. And I thought after our show that I was good. Although, uh, I was at a dinner, and the topic came up, and people were talking about gift buying, and decorating and entertaining and I started getting those little palpitations and breathing heavily and I thought you know what I'm not done with this topic we need a part two yes so thank you for <laughs> indulging me Michael and all of those You're of welcome. you out there we do because for whatever reason whoever you are however you feel about the holidays I mean there are so many different types of people and their attitudes towards the holidays. There are those people, and we all know them, who just love the holidays, who start decorating after Labor Day and talking about it all and music and okay, you know. And you go into their house and it looks like Christmas threw up all over it. You know, yep. but they love it, right? Absolutely. And that, I love it too. Honestly, I love yep. walking into somebody else's environment <laughs> and seeing it all Christmas. What it what that does for me is creates panic for me because I'm like if I put everything up I have to take it down right right and then I have like hundreds of Disney ornaments that are each individually wrapped in bubble wrap and tissue paper and I just it, it stresses me out yeah I'm like I don't want to do it so on the other end we all have those friends those bah humbug guys who hate Christmas and they hate people who talk about it and they're so you know bah humbug negative 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 you know get over yourselves it's just a few months uh, but then there are of course those other people who are really suffering from seasonal depression yep. mainly because of the you know time change and it's darker and you know that happens and then the holidays on top of that makes seasonal depression into just depression um and then there is that whole group of gay guys and we all know these guys too who pretty much spend the entire holiday season praying for january just to get it over with you know um and again, it's just the holiday season. No matter what attitude you have about it, no matter who you are, gay, straight, whatever color you are, the holidays are stressful and for so many people, really, really overwhelming. So let's talk about that a bit. Um, what is one aspect of the holidays, Michael, that is incredibly overwhelming for you? Um, as much as I love gift giving, uh, and uh, it 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 always creates a, a stress because yeah. you know, I'm I'm that person who still will go out and shop in a mall or in stores because I I don't like Amazon except if I'm buying something for me, right? You know because. It's easier if I'm buying something for somebody else, I want to see it. So, you know, weeks before the holidays start, believe it or not, I'm actually behind because I'm usually finished Christmas shopping by Thanksgiving. Wow. Because um, again, it's just, it's, it's less stressful. There are less people, there's less panic in the mall. Because <laughs> yeah. there's, it's, you know, you go into the mall after Thanksgiving and everybody has that deer in the headlight look. No. Um, and it's... Uh, yeah, so this this holiday is going to be a little bit more stressful for me because I'm really late. The whole gift thing is so crazy. I mean, I love giving gifts. Uh, I hate 
getting gifts. I hate that. I don't know what that is. I just, I just don't want anyone to give me anything. I'd rather give you something. Yeah. But I too, I need the perfect gift for the perfect person. And, and unfortunately right now, not that it really has changed, but everything is expensive. Everything and is crazy expensive. Crazy yeah. expensive. Yeah. And and you also kind of put how how are you put like this monetary level or limit on a friendship like, oh well they're worth fifty bucks, but he's worth a hundred bucks and and those people get three hundred bucks. Like it, that's just a lot, you know. I wish it is. I, I don't necessarily I don't do that. Um I'll go out. If I see something for somebody, I don't look at prices, which is not a good thing most yeah. of the time. Because believe it or not, even with my cargo shorts on, I tend <laughs> to be drawn to expensive things. Okay. You know, if, if I see it and it's like, oh, 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 it's four hundred dollars, yeah, or whatever. Um, so I don't necessarily put a, a a limit on it before the shopping. I'll find something that I think works for that person, which is why I enjoy it. Um, enjoy the process of. Uh, gift giving okay and like you i don't i'm not a fan of receiving gifts yeah i just don't i don't want anyone to like when we have something at our house i don't want people to bring even the bottle of wine just no don't bring anything to me but when i go to your house of course i'm bringing something what am i a, right you know animal oh, so, so that's that's something good for us to remember because as much as we enjoy giving gifts more than likely that other person is enjoying give it to giving it to you so to receive it with uh Grace, I think, is a great lesson for us to learn. Right. Um, that they are getting something out of it. Somebody went out of their way to buy something that they think we would like. Right. And to me, that makes me really happy. So we have to remember that if it makes them feel better to give the gift, that we have to receive it with grace. Right. I, I totally get the whole receiving with grace thing. I just, it also makes me a little like, uh, but no, I get it. I get your point. It's, it's a really valid point. Another aspect of the gift giving though, and I don't know if you're one of these people, not only do you have to find the right gift, find the you know right amount of money to spend, but then there's like the wrapping of the gift. Some people are so over the top with the wrapping and it's just this absolutely like, you know, creation that they've made and you don't yeah. even want to open it at all. Um, well, that's you. Like <laughs> okay. you're, you're, you're a fancy rapper. Okay. Me, it gets really not necessarily a great wrapping job, but just a layer of wrapping paper. That's it. I don't even go the bow route. Yeah. I'll put a little sticker on it for who it's for. And that's as far as I go, because I do realize He's going in the garbage. Yeah, so. that's the thing, right? It is just going in the garbage. Um, yeah. Did um, you have those aunts or those family members that would carefully unwrap things and be so cautious about taking off the scotch tape so the paper doesn't rip, and then they would save it to rewrap something else? Yeah. Um, Scott's mother, my, my mother-in-law, did that, and I would just be sitting there like, just rip! the goddamn thing <laughs> like you're not going to use it again what are you doing you know oh no my italian ants they yeah. used it again oh okay there was a closet with shelves in it wow of wrapping paper that had been on other presents that if you needed something wrapped you knew where to go to get it wrapped yeah okay well that's cool though they turned yeah. it into an art i'm telling you they would save the bows the ribbons <laughs> it was and, crazy and seriously though because it's all so freaking expensive that's a smart thing to do yeah you know uh and then you like mix and match and yeah i think that's a great way to do um another really overwhelming part of this gift giving thing for me uh always has been is the tipping you know at the holidays you have to tip everybody, you know, from your gardener to the pool guy to the house cleaner to the person who cuts your hair to, you know, I have every year I print out those things from the Internet of like how much you're supposed to give to all these different service people. And it's just it, that's overwhelming to me. You're like, OK, well, I have to give something to the garbage man. Like what? Uh 
it's just it gets. I, th- a- I think if you have uh, developed a relationship with them, and if they provide you with excellent service and go out of their way to help you, then that's definitely appropriate. But you know, I'm not sure you have to do it across the board, especially these days, because again, it's, it's well, things are really expensive. Yeah, but these people, and and you worked in the service industry Absolutely. you know these people rely on this christmas bonuses that they're getting these tips because that's gonna kind of carry them through months if not a longer time uh so i just feel yeah obligated you know you have to and then i google how much do you give to this person and you know it's just it, it's just overwhelming it's just another part of the holidays that is just put on top of us it's like oh i, I have to remember all that stuff as well and and again, the expense. Here's yet another expense. But well, these I people... I fall, I fall into the lucky category because I don't have a gardener. I don't have, uh, you know, the pool guy. I don't have all that stuff. So I guess I should be happy for that. Well, uh, yeah, but um, no, yes. Because, yeah, yes. I mean, that's a lot of... You're, you're right. The list you just gave off, that's a lot of added expense if you have all those people providing you with the service. And, you know, yes, I'm in a house now, but uh, living in New York City, you've got the doorman and there's more than one. You've got the super, you've got, you know, like no matter where you are, there is this list of people with their hand out. And it's not in a, a bad way because these people throughout the year are doing a lot of Herculean, things for us. Yeah, yeah right? tasks they oh do my on God. a daily basis. And with, uh, usually, I mean amazing smiles just like sure what else do you need me to do i'll do it for you you yeah especially here in the desert you find that um and for those of us gay guys who are over 50 and getting older every freaking minute of the day the less and less that we will be able to do as we're aging and we do need to rely on these people who are helping us to do whatever it is you know um i know like there are things that i'm stopping to do you know that i normally would be like oh sure i can dig that hole you know the last time i dug a hole i ended up at urgent care (laughs) like my back (laughs) i can't stand (laughs) up you know so okay my body is changing and as a gay guy over 50 i have to you know acknowledge that and be like well i do need to rely on people and i do need to acknowledge them at the holidays as well but As I said, it's just yet another layer of overwhelming things to worry about, you know. And expense. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, uh, Anything else like overwhelming for you in this holiday season? The enforced merriment um, is something that stresses me out because I would still consider myself antisocial and do experience social anxiety, although I've gotten so much better at it, but I still feel, especially New Year, right? Yeah. I don't like being around that many drunk people, and it almost feels, eh, on some level, a little bit phony, because everybody thinks, I have to have a great time, woo! Right. And um, so I tend to avoid New Year, um, cause it's just not my speed there. So, um, yeah. I, and you know, I, people will come up to you. Why aren't you smiling? I'm like, well, cause I don't want to right now. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's something that makes me nuts. I find most holidays have that forced enjoyment thing. You know, Halloween, you've got to be out there having so much fun. Christmas, Christmas Eve, definitely New Year's, Valentine's Day, whatever the holiday is. It's just that force. You have to be out. You have to be having fun. You've got to over drink and overeat. And it's it's a little too much. And for a lot of people, like you said, you're getting better at being, you know, social. And I have seen you out in the world. You are doing so much better, um, which is great. But as we talked about, this season brings so much up for other people. There's the seasonal depression, the, you know, depression just because I'm not with my family because I've yeah. been ostracized or whatever. And then to have that forced fun, you have to be having fun. It's like, but I feel horrible right now, you know, Um and I think that's a really important thing for those of us who do experience that is to acknowledge it. Right. 
And if you don't feel comfortable, that's more than okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not person who has their spot. Like I like to sit in a particular place. Um, yeah. I like to be away from the center of the room because it, it does, it brings me anxiety. Yeah. Um, and so much so, <laughs> this is really funny. The guy who does musical bingo sent me a text the other day, letting me know there was going to be a change and that I wouldn't be able to have my spot. <gasps> and he let me know because he knew Sheldon Cooper that, was going Sheldon to have a little Cooper fit. Was in the house. Yeah. And that's exactly what I sent him a meme of Sheldon saying, you're in my spot. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> How are you going to deal with that? Um, I'm going to go early. Okay. And scope out the environment and find a place that I feel comfortable in. And that's what I do. To, uh, that's how I learned to manage my, you know, stress when it comes to things like that and the forced merriment of the holidays. I, I, I find my comfort zone. And I exist in it. And then it makes me more likely to wander out a little bit more. Sure. I totally get that. And I think that's a brilliant kind of tip for people, uh, as you said, to go early, scope it out. I do something that's so bizarre as well. You know, if we're going to a restaurant that I've never been to, I go online, I look at the menu beforehand, I actually drive by it. Where am I going to park? What, you know, how long does it take to get there? To, to get rid of all of that kind of anxious stuff so that you can enjoy the evening right um, right and so that what you're doing is a great tip for people who who are feeling this anxiety around the holidays to there are little steps that you can do to make yourself feel better you know or help you get through these things yeah and, and then once you're sitting in your own comfort zone it does it does make it easier because the anxiety becomes so much less that you are more willing to step out of that box right which for me has been a really great learning experience over the last, you know, decade or two, um, that I do do that quite often. I think also, though, for a lot of gay guys over 50, I mean, we've gotten to a point where we're just not going to do what we don't want to do, you know. And I think if you are one of those people who, who are, like you are feeling anxiety about something new or, or you know, don't want to be in these crowds of forced merriment, uh, to just get together with your little circle of friends where you do find comfort and celebrate that way. So like, what's an area that causes you stress um, and anxiety during the holidays? Well, actually, you mentioned this earlier. And as you were saying that, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I'm feeling that as well. Uh, about the decorating. And you said, you know, you have all this stuff. And then you if you put it out, then you've got to put it away. And I feel... Like my husband loves Christmas, would love to have Christmas trees, but I can't just do a Christmas tree. If I'm going to do it and someone's going to come to my house, I don't want them to see, oh, he only has one Christmas tree. No, I've got 17 Christmas trees and I want them everywhere and I want to, I have to overdo everything as I always do. And every year has a theme. Come to my garage if you need some Christmas decorations and you want a theme because every year I have a new theme. Um, so, yeah, that for me is like, oh, yeah, a Christmas tree. OK, well, then that means I have to do this. And the, in the dining room, I have to do this. And, uh, you know, I've got to outside. I have to do around outside. And so... And and you're right. If you put it out, you got to mm -hmm. put it away. And that is always, for me, another place of anxiety and feeling overwhelmed because when it's over, I want it to be over. And I want that stuff away. Me too. The day after Christmas, my stuff comes down. Right? Yep. It's like, no, we are not, this is not staying up till... Uh, New Year's Day, or so many people do Little Christmas on January 6th. That's when it's going to come down. Like, no, 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 no. The moment the last person leaves my house, <laughs> it's gone. Like, we are yeah, taking there, there, this There down. have been times in the past where I'm taking it down late Christmas night. Yeah. It's like, because I don't wow. want to wake up. Yeah, okay. I, at least the ornaments come off, because again, that's like hours of work. Right. No, I like, know. To individually wrap these little suckers and, you yeah. know... I love the whole process of, as I said, creating the theme and getting all of the stuff and, and figuring out where I'm going to do what and all that stuff. But, wow, it takes a lot. And yeah. You know what I do love, though? Hmm. Which this just reminded me of that. So it, it just went, oh, 
that's a reason to bring down the stress level a little about taking it down. I love rediscovering ornaments that you forgot you had. Right. And it's like, oh my God, that's gorgeous. Or you know, that, that, that there's this little child that kicks in for some strange reason. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm loving decorating <laughs> oh. the tree. And then, you know, that, you know, right. you deal with the other stuff later. Right. So I guess, it, it, you know, that's a good lesson to live in each moment oh, during the holidays. During the holidays and throughout the year, yeah. living in the moment is a really hard thing that we all need to do. Yeah. Especially those of us gay guys over 50 who are keep moving forward. You know, it's rough to just live in the moment and not in the past or not in the future. Uh, so yeah, that, that's a big thing. Also around that same kind of theme or idea, entertaining throughout the holidays. That's a big, overwhelming, stressful thing because as you were saying about the forced fun that we all feel like we have to, everyone who's entertaining around the holidays are like this forced, oh, it's it can't just be, as we said, my little group of friends getting together and having pizza. No, it has to be major everything. And it just gets everything get seems to be over the top, especially with us gay guys uh, or, you know, some of the gay guys like myself. It all seems to have to be so the best, the, the perfect, the everything, you know. Um, so entertaining is a rough thing. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something that um, maybe giggle a little bit about you, but it just goes to show you how very different we are. Okay. Um, and you were talking about having people over and you were stressing a little bit about cooking. And I was like, well, no, why not just have a potluck? And you were like, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm like, okay. Um, um. It just cracked me up because, it, again, it's one of those things that just show how drastically different we are. Yes. That you have to have your... your your comfort zone is being in control of every single thing and every single aspect where I'm like, eh, potluck, bring something. What do you right. want me to bring? I don't care. You know? Yeah. Again, this is going to show you how really effed up I am. Yes, I don't want to ever have a potluck. One thing, I don't want all those weird dishes. I want everything to match <laughs> and look perfect together. <laughs> <laughs> and I also... Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> I know, right? But that's who I am. Uh, I also don't want to do the whole, I'm leaving, I need my dish. So we've got to be cleaning all that stuff. Like, no, I'm, I will deal with all the cleanup when everyone leaves or, you know, if I have someone there to clean during it, great. But uh, I don't like that. Like, oh, I'm leaving. I need my plate. And then, you know, nobody ate my green bean casserole. What was wrong? You're like, mm, because you it's know a, what I have been known to do. Oh, what? I need my plate. Uh, it's over there. Go wash it. Oh, okay. That, that solves a big problem right there. Because if it wasn't clean yet and you got to go, there's the sink. Right. There's a sponge. There's some joy. Have at it. <laughs> Have some joy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just a little bit more about how effed up I am. I want to bring things to people's homes. You know, like, oh, you're having a dinner. What can I bring? What do you want us to make for this? And yet if you're coming to my house, no. Nope. It's just... Which is what brings me such joy every time I come over to your house that I do bring something. Yeah. Just to see the look <laughs> on your face. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm Italian. You never walked into somebody else's house without something. I get As it. As a thank you for inviting me into your home and into, right. your, into your space. So. I was, I think, five years old. And one of my uncles sat all the cousins down and was like giving us the life lessons. And one of the things he said I will never, ever forget... Never walk into a home with your arms being the same length, meaning you are carrying something. Uh, you always have to be bringing something into someone's home. Unless you're coming into my home, no one brings anything. So there you go. Except all, me. all your arms can be the same length. That's good. My, my arms are never the same length when I walk into your house. Yes, I know. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's 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 move away from this entertaining thing. But you know what? That also brings me to something else that's a little overwhelming and stressful for the holiday season. Whether you're entertaining, going to a party, uh, going even out to dinner, doing a New Year's Eve thing. It's your clothing, right? Yes. What do I wear? I can't wear what I wore last year. 
I need to have that new outfit. I have to look so great because, you know, and again, this is a big thing in those of us gay men over 50 who've been gay our entire lives. And the the way we present ourselves and our clothing is such a big thing. But even in high school, like New Year's Eve parties, you had to have like the, the best outfit or, you know, I was uh, describing to our producer when we first started about... I am wearing a green turtleneck. And if you cannot see it, that means you have to get over to YouTube and like and subscribe our channel, which is no two gays about it, the number two. Also hit the little bell so that every time we have a new episode or a new video, you will see Michael and I, and you will see the green turtleneck that I'm wearing. I bought this turtleneck to go with the Brooks Brothers Black corduroy pants that have little hollies on them, green and red. Oh, my God. For my new, you know, because I can't wear the same red plaid pants that I wore to some events last summer. Or last summer. No, last uh, Christmas. So I needed a green turtleneck to go with this because the black is not fully black. If you know Brooks Brothers, it's not that fully dark, dark, dark black color. Um, And it's the wrong green. So I can't wear this with his pants. Our levels of gayness are so <laughs> unbelievable. We're the North Pole and the South Pole, equally as intense, gay. <laughs> but yeah. so gay on such different levels. It's not even funny because wow, that was that was amazing. Because I see that one coming. You, you know me. <laughs> I don't put that much thought into it. Although I do not wear cargo shorts for Christmas. Good. Just um, but, cargo pants. No, <laughs> that would be. I awesome. don't do cargo pants. No. I'm too okay. hippie for that. Um, okay. oh. That's the childbearing Sicilian hips that I inherited. Um, but yeah, I, I wear stupid, fun Christmas sweaters. I have one with the, the bulbs light up. Or yeah. I have my Barry Manilow Christmas sweater that says Barry Christmas. Um, I, really, I, I like stuff like that. Because no. I also do like to be comfortable, yeah. um, which is a big thing for me. I got it. So. Last, last Christmas Eve, we went to a party and I got... Christmas onesies for both myself and my husband, and we wore those. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. You know, just for like kicks and grins, right? It was fun. It was very comfortable, uh, very warm. I had a hood, and you know, it was a onesie. Um, so yeah, the, the whole planning That's of like awesome. the I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, Give me a onesie. Me, I'm there. Uh, you can use mine. I have two. I can't wear them again because I can't. Oh, all right. So I will. I will happily inherit those. Very. There you go. Uh, but that whole, again, the, the planning the outfits is another very stressful and overwhelming part of the holidays that we ha- tend to have to deal with. Uh, so yeah, it's like the buying the gifts and wrapping the gifts and figuring out entertaining and decorating your home and then decorating yourself. Um, I do have a question for you, and this is because you are the single guy who yes, is Mrs. out Ricardo. there, and I have, uh, you know, been in a relationship for so long. I'm wondering about the whole concept of coupling um, around the holidays. Do you straight men feel that you need to have that relationship? around the holidays is that an important did you just thing? say you straight men did i you did i, I was, thought you were I, I had no idea where you were going to go with this and wow. when you threw that in you straight men i was um, well i can assure I, you <laughs> that i yeah the, neither one of us are even close to that realm no i i, I was going for single <laughs> i don't know how i got straight oh i was That's gonna a, then do like you know, is it the same in the gay world as it is in the straight world? Because uh, I read a whole article about this, how, you know, that coupling thing, or they call it yeah. something else, a season. So, yeah, I'm asking about you. In this gay, especially gay men over 50, do you guys feel, ooh, I don't have a relationship for the holidays, and it's September, I got to start looking for that guy or something? Oddly enough, I would do that when I was younger. Okay. In my 20s and um, early 30s. I would totally do that. Um, Because it's nice to be with somebody during the holidays, right? Um, As I've gotten older and a little bit more functional, um, emotionally and mentally, (laughs) notice I said a little, um, I have no need to do that anymore. Yeah. It's just, especially if it's with someone who 
you know you're just they're fill, they're a placeholder, right? Um, it for me it creates way more stress. I'm good being alone because I have wonderful friends. I really love the holidays with them. Um, so if I am with somebody, I am, and if I'm not, I I experience the same amount of joy. Um, but I can definitely see how that is a thing because again, I used to do it when I was younger. Yeah, it's like I have to have somebody from like. Mm, let's go, let's go with Halloween through Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, get no, all the that, big check ones out of the way. That totally makes sense. But also, I would think that that adds so much more stress because, as you said, you already have this friend group of yours that you love and you love, you know, spending the holidays with and being with. But then having that new guy be a part of it, you you feel like, oh, I've got to entertain them. I've got to be explaining about, you know. I would just think that that would add some added stress but i also can see but it it, it adds comfort as well there, yeah because there's it... there's a level of i'm alone for the holidays yeah. that you're not experiencing because you you're you're with somebody you know and i'm sure a lot of times i was a placeholder for them as well so you know it's that symbiotic let's get through the holidays right. and then break up sort of mentality and how crazy i mean yeah straight guy straight Straight. Why do I keep saying straight for single? Know. Oh my That's Lord. so bizarre. <laughs> single guys are saying like, oh, I'm alone for the holidays. And like a couple people are like, oh, but you're alone for the holidays. <laughs> you know, lucky you. <laughs> right? The grass is always greener. Right? The grass is uh -huh. always greener. Um, yeah. So regardless right. of this position you find yourself in, coupled, uncoupled, experience the joy within you. And then I think the rest is just icing on the cake, right? There you go. Great. Yeah. And I love some icing. That's for sure. And I love some cake. So oh, there you go. Uh, that's, you know, one of the reasons why I've married my husband, because he likes the cake and not the icing. And I like the icing. So we get along quite well that way. Uh, one more area. I know we discussed this in our first uh, segment on the holidays uh, when we were talking a lot about this family. And family is brings up a lot for people. Um, but I just want to touch on that as well because we're talking about all the different things that are overwhelming. Uh, families can be really overwhelming to... Uh, Especially if there's some sort of discourse yeah. regarding, you know, who you are, right. you know, being part of the LGBTQ community. Um, it, inevitably, especially with people our age, it brings up stuff for family members. Totally. Where they're not accepting or they don't want to hear about it or they just tolerate it. Right. And, uh, yeah. and even if you, your family, your immediate family are great with who you are and your lifestyle and your, you know, partners or whatever... There's always those other family members, the uncles, the aunts that don't get it, who have to constantly be saying things or, you know, digging in some way. Um, so, yeah, that there's that added anxiety and that added overwhelming, like, what are they going to say to me this year? Or, you know, and those of us at our age can basically shut people down or ignore them or whatever. But it still gets in, you know? Yeah. We still hear it. We still feel it. And like um, you said, we talked about this in part one. So if you guys want a few little pointers or maybe some helpful hints about how to deal with family in a healthier way, check out our first episode because it's all there. Yeah, there you go. Great. Um, all right. So what else? Anything that is overwhelming to you that is putting on too much holiday pressure for you? No. Yeah. Um, just because, again, you know, I, I, I try to work through that in the moment. And it inevitably will help me enjoy the holidays more. Um, you know, because I'm going to go back to L.A. for Thanksgiving. Um, and I found myself, like, dreading the drive. And I'm like, well, why are you even bothering thinking about this at that this right. particular moment, because when you get to LA, you're going to be surrounded with people that you love and you know, it's just going to be a wonderful day. So focus on that instead of the dread. Right. And I think it changes your whole perspective on the holiday. That uh, yet another brilliant thing you've said today, because that affects so many other people, especially a lot of us gay guys 
have moved away from our homes. We've moved away from the states that we grew up in because we needed that distance. We found our new families. But those people that do need to travel back somewhere, just that alone, like you were saying, like, oh, it's the drive, or oh, I've got to take the plane ride, and then I've got to, yeah, you know, it is all of that. Focus, try to focus on the positives that are out yeah. there. Focus on the moments when you're going to be there and just, you know, feeling that, especially if it's, you know, the chosen family that a lot of us have created, because you know you're going into a space of unconditional love. Right. And so that's, a, that, that's helpful for me when I am sort of spiraling <laughs> down into my obsessive compulsive behavior that it's like, oh, wait a minute, I don't really have to be going there. Um, yeah. And if I hit traffic going into LA, then I hit traffic going into yeah. LA. So yeah, it, it right? is what it is. It's not going to change it today. You right. Know? So why sit in that? And I think that that's great advice for all the things that we're talking about. You know, if you're feeling overwhelmed and anxious about, you know, decorating, as you were saying, take a moment and look at the ornaments and remember the the when you bought it or or how it makes you feel or you know oh i can't put this tree up because i have to take it down no wait just focus on the positives how how you feel when you see the the fully dressed tree in front of you and the lights are on and you know or gift buying picture that face of whoever you're giving this to yeah right and i think we probably should take the price tag out of the equation that if you find one gift that's inexpensive that you think somebody is genuinely going to love, that's cool. Yeah. Let it be that it doesn't, you know, you don't have to set that limit. Um, that so many of us do do. It's like, Oh, I have to spend this much money. Oh, I have to buy one more gift. But if you find something that the person is genuinely going to love, be happy with that. Cause like you said, just to see their face when they open and go, Oh my God. Right. It's, it's worth, it's worth the stress. Totally. For, for all of all these different things, you know, even trying to find the right outfit for New Year's Eve, you know, picture, how am I going to feel when I'm wearing this amazing outfit, you know, because it's not you for anybody else. You know what I want to wear this New Year's Eve? What are you wearing? Your onesie. Okay. Well, they're Christmas <laughs> onesies. Is that okay? That's okay. Okay. That's more than okay. Well, there are two. Uh, one's red, one's green. You can wear one on Christmas and one on New Year's. Okay. You know, easy, easy peasy. Easy peasy. There you go. Right? <laughs> So and put on put on one of your favorite Christmas movies when you're you know decorating or wrapping presents, so that you could focus on that as well because it's always especially wrapping presents it could be a little tedious. So if you have something on that's festive in the background, it helps. I love to turn on old Christmas movies during that period. You know, if you're wrapping or if you're decorating or something to just. And and it's funny, I'm doing everything that you have just suggested for us to do, but I like will remember myself watching this movie with my mom or with my, you know, family or how I felt as a kid watching White Christmas or whatever it is. I was just so. going to say, what's your favorite comfort movie for the holidays? For the holidays? Um, well, I do like White Christmas. Um my mother's favorite movie was Christmas in Connecticut. So if that's on, I always watch that and think, oh, mom, you know, think about uh-huh. her. Uh, what about you? It Happened One Christmas, which is a remake of It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, and Marlo Thomas plays the Jimmy Stewart role. <laughs> cool. Cloris Leachman is the angel. Fantastic. Instead of Clarence, she's Clara. And Doris Roberts is in it. Orson Welles is in it. It's got this amazing cast, and it's nothing makes me happier than that mo- movie at uh, the holidays. Nice. All right. Yeah. Noted. Good to know. And I, I actually um, got to buy Doris Roberts dinner one evening, and I brought up that movie, and the look on her face was like, "What? <laughs> what you and talking like, about, Willis?" She was like, "How do you know this movie?" I'm like, "Because it's one of my favorite movies. I actually." Well, uh, someone who I was with over Christmas hunted this down and got me the DVD of it, which was impossible to find because it was only available on VHS. Um, And yeah, that's still one of my prized possessions. Sweet. Okay. That's awesome. Um, All right. You know what? I want to go to one of my favorite segments, which is the Savage Side Eye. I have two groups of people I'm going to throw some side eye too. Um, 
The first group, we mentioned them in the very beginning, those people who are so into Christmas and love every, every aspect of it, which good, good for you. But I don't like those people who have the attitude of, you know, you don't like Christmas? What's wrong with you? Uh, you're depressed around Christmas? Get over it. You know, no. You got to kind of be uh, like understanding about other people. Yeah, meet people where they are. Right. And then hopefully take a journey to a new place that both of you can experience together, right? And instead of putting them down for not liking Christmas as you do, maybe help them get there. You know, maybe share some of your joy to them about the season to make their season a little bit better instead of that just dismissal. You don't like yeah. Christmas? Well, I don't know what's wrong with you kind of thing. The, or ask them why. Well, yeah, there's that. Right, get a right? little more insight as to what their holiday experience has been. Exactly. Um, but then I also have to throw a little side eye over at the other group of people, those bah humbergs uh, who are... You know, oh, I hate Christmas. Christmas is stupid. I hate you people who put up all... Like, you have to have the same thing. You know, maybe this isn't your season. Maybe this isn't y what brings you joy. But it brings those people joy. So let them have it. Why do you want to take that away from them? You know? Uh, so it's the same thing. Trying to meet in the middle and just be like, you know what? Good on you. And you, yeah. and you look great in your onesie. And I love the way you decorated your house. And... You know, give it to them because that's what brings them joy. And maybe being a little bit less negative and bitter might bring you a little joy as well. So, And again, ask them the question. So why is it that you enjoy this holiday so much? Because it may give you a different perspective that you did not have before. Don't just go, Bleh. Exactly. You know? Right? Yeah. You never know what that story is going to nope. reveal, uh, which is great. So, yes, for all of you people out there who are experiencing all these overwhelming peer, uh, feelings, uh, know that you're not alone, because you're not. We're all feeling these yes, in absolutely. various different ways. As Michael said, we are so completely different, and yet we're feeling having these same sort of feelings in different ways. So it's great to talk about it. It's great to kind of deal with it in that way, in an open way, instead of spiraling away. Uh, any more words of wisdom you can pass on to our listeners and watchers? I don't know about wisdom, but... Um, <laughs> words. Mm, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> right there, they're words. Um, no, but I have a side eye as well. Okay, good. Because, you know, this time of year, we go to events or shows or happenings, and we're sitting with around other people who we don't know. This side eye is going out for those people who go to those events and during the course of the show, decide to have a conversation about their home life, their kids, their dogs, whatever. And it's happened to me twice in the last week where I literally had to turn and go, could you have this conversation after the show? And once it happened, both of them were really apologetic. The other time it happened, one of them was apologetic and the other one looked at me like I farted on their best suit. Um, where it was like, you have some nerve interrupting us. I'm like, wow, bitch, people paid for this ticket. They don't want to hear you. They want to hear Adina Menzel singing, right? Right. So could y'all just be a little bit more aware of your surroundings if that is you and you decide to have conversations during the middle of a show? Inappropriate. That's all I'm saying. Awesome. You got to find <laughs> us on YouTube. And not only find us on YouTube, but you've got to reach out to us uh, everywhere. And how can people do that, Michael? You can read us, reach us across all social media platforms at no two gays about it. And that is the number two. So no, the number two gays about it. Um, and for you guys who are regular listeners, we mentioned this in last week's episode that we've created a, um, page for you guys to reach out to each other and have conversations with like-minded folks and that is an invite page. So you have to go and you have to request an invite. And then we police it to make sure, you know, there are no um, trolls there or anti-LGBTQ folks who are going to be coming in and just meet and have conversations with each other. And you can find us at No Two Gays Community on Facebook. And that is strictly for you guys 
to do with what you want and, you know, meet each other across the country or across the world. Because we got a comment from someone in Malta a couple of weeks ago, and me and Tom were both like, Malta? Holy Malta? Crap. <laughs> right? So have a conversation with somebody from Malta. You know, it's, right. it's, it's kind of amazing what social media can do when it's used for the purposes that it was supposed to be. So again, that's no two gays community on Facebook. Yeah, everybody. As I said, when we first started today, that the purpose of No Two Gays About It is to bring the over 50 gay male voice back to the conversation, but that we are not just bringing us back to the conversation. We are that conversation, and we want you all to join in with that conversation of ours. And this whole season, we've been talking about all the various and varied relationships that guys like us have to deal with. And so we're starting to figure out what is our next season going to be about. So we'd like to hear from you. Let us know what do you think we should be talking about. What are things that are important to your group of over 50 gay male friends? Uh, reach out to us. Let us know that. Yeah, but please. It, we love to hear from you. We love yeah. the input. We love every, you know, you guys have made this experience so much more than we thought it was going to be. And we really appreciate that. Totally. Um, and also, we just, from, from all of us at No Two Gays About It, Michael, myself, Jessica, are an amazing producer, we want everyone out there to have the best holiday season that they possibly can. And hopefully the things that we've talked about both today and in our part one of the holidays, uh, giving you a few tips to help you get through the holidays and make it the best one yet. So happy holidays to all of you. Um, hopefully Michael will take pictures of himself wearing his onesies this holiday season and post that for all of us. Um, and we'll be back next week. So until then, Michael. Until then, Tom. Thank you everyone for listening and happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays.